In a previous video, to which I will insert a link if I can remember, and if I can work out how, I showed how I repair the broken bases of glass bottom tankards belonging to the Student Union Bar at Mayo University. <coughs> the pots are engraved every year with the names of the incumbents, and I've noticed that some of them are getting really quite full. This set me to wondering if I can make replacement tankers to the same pattern, as the original cast feature tankers are no longer available. There are many spun metal tankers out there, and there's nothing wrong with that. In fact, I have made spun pewter parts myself to replace the lid of one of the large drinking vessels. And I'll put a link there for that one if I remember as well. But the original pattern tankers are cast, and that is what I decided to attempt. Making the moulds for a full-size tankard will be rather a commitment in time and materials, so I decided to scale everything down to make a miniature tankard that holds 50ml rather than 568ml. This is a model of the drink inside the tankard. And as the tankard is smaller at the top than at the base, but there needs to be a flange for the glass bottom to seal against, the inside of the mould has to be an awkward re entrant shape. This means that the mould is a little more complicated than it might be expected. So, the inside mould is made up of four pieces of cast iron that slot together with dovetails. Here's how they fit together to make the space inside the pewter for the booze. They are then held firmly together with a wedge, which pushes everything tight to make it pewter proof. And then on the underneath that there's an extra piece which supports the outer mould and makes the recess into which the glass bottom, the seal and the sealing and the retaining ring will go. Thin wall castings are difficult to do so I'm actually casting quite thick and then machining to final thickness so this blob that's on there is actually where the pewter itself goes after casting. To make the moulds I started with a large piece of concast uh, Durabar iron uh, which was a bit too big. Uh, I could have milled this away, but turning is quicker, especially when you do a fast forward. Then squared off on the milling machine to the rough shape. Then onto the mill to machine the dovetails and the outside shape. I made this as two parts, which were then split with the bandsaw to be assembled. After a fair bit more machining, it's time to start casting. So the first job is to assemble the mould. Uh, I can screw the screw up at the bottom to make space so it all fits together. Then the four parts go onto the wedge, like, like this. Then it's held, sort of clamped down onto the bottom nut with the screw cap. The pattern is then painted with a mixture of white spirit and jewellers rouge. Traditionally the mixture includes egg white and water and other things, but I've found that simply white spirit and jewellers rouge seems to stop the pewter sticking to the mould and also fills up some of the smaller gaps in the mould through which pewter can creep. All parts of the mould have been painted with the anti-flux. The outer part can then be slotted on top and the whole thing goes into the oven for preheating. You'll know I was casting using my gas hob. I've since bought a commercial bullet casting melting pot but I've modified it with a proper PID controller so I can see the temperature. You can see that in the bottom shot. With all the mould parts preheated it's time to start casting starting with the retaining ring that holds the glass base in. This is a two-part mould it's quickly filled from the thing and then I tap it to try to displace any air bubbles uh, this I had to make some air relief grooves and I can know it's full when you start just seeing pewter oozing out the bottom like that the main body of the tankard this is just filled from the top there's no special way in for the pewter I just let it fall on top uh, hopefully catching the dross, but my, of course my arm's in the way so you can't see this.
the two part spit mould for the handle is a bit fiddly so it has to be held in the oven gloves and that means you can't see anything at all but it fills easily and always gives a good part To machine the outer surface of the main body of the tankard, I leave it on the mould on the inner mould, just removing the outer mould to mount it in the lathe. With the outside machining done, the mould can now be dismantled from inside the pot. First removing the wedge, and then taking out the four pieces out of the small end. I made some special press tooling to make the ceiling rings out of silicone rubber. With all the parts made, it's time to start soldering the pot together. First of all, applying solder, uh, low melting point business solder to the retaining ring. Then I squeeze it all together in a press while I'm soldering it. The handle needs a little bit of work to suit the angles and curvature of the outside of the pot. I file it uh, in an inverted way, holding the file stationary and sliding the handle on the top of the file. 
bolt can be soldered on with more solder of the low melting point type. And that's basically it, a finished pot. Balsam fettling, cleaning, polishing, etc.